Good day Fred friends, and uh, a couple of new things today. For one, new camera angle. I've moved the camera further back and higher up so you get to see more of me, but especially you get to see more of the workbench. In fact, you get to see some of the workbench at a normal angle. So what do we have today? We have a nice crafter in today, a little bit dusty, and it's an old model. I know it's an old model because it's made in Korea, and I don't think crafter make guitars in Korea anymore. Um, and it is quite an old one, it is a Crafter model number GAE 45 stroke N, N standing for natural, which will be to do with the finish. A lot of uh, standout things on this guitar. Inlays like a, uh, I don't think it's quite a tree of life inlay, but it's similar. I find that very, very off putting myself, but each to their own. You've got dot markers on the side, which is great because you almost know where you are, but some really strange and weird stuff is you have inlays around the rosette on the saddle or on the bridge uh, binding around the whole body uh, inlays inside the bounding binding you've got a nice center uh, inlays there absolutely beautiful lovely wood i would think this would be a mahogany back and sides probably could be cedar but i'd imagine this is a spruce top two piece uh, standard um, headstock Grover type tuners I imagine they're original and the guitar looks really really quite nice and I'm sure it plays nice as well uh, I'll just add it plugged in to make sure the tuners work but why is it in well it needs a setup obviously but it also needs the frets the frets are going to, have to be leveled and well we need profiling because there's some indentations in quite a few frets so we're going to level the lot bring them all down to a level where we can recrown them all because when we take material from the top, we're going to flatten the frets and we need to put that crown back in. So we're going to reprofile the lot uh, once they have been levelled. Uh, but we're going to check the setup first and foremost. And the first thing I did was check the electrics. And the electrics are working. It's got an EQ system in there. TP, is it TPS Pro? TP Stroke S Pro, whatever that is. It's got Crafter branding on there. Is it an LR bags? I don't know. Could be, but I don't know. But anyway, we just check that the electrics are working. do work and all the EQ bits work there's a bit of scratching in there we'll get some switch cleaner in there I think try the bass middle treble and the scoop we have a phase switch Mute. So the electrics are working fine. A couple of little things to point out on this as well. I don't like the way the knot is on this guitar. We're going to have a look at that. Just turn off the amp. Get this guitar lead out of the way. Um, the knot is not sitting as flush as it ought to be. Now I've got knock with nut off anyway. I'm going to level the frets. So we'll have a look at that and we'll try and get that sorted out. A little bit messy around this area. Uh, there's a gap between the nut and the edge of the fingerboard as well. So we will try and address that. The nut also seems to slightly overlap uh, at this end. It looks like it to be a little bit too wide. I'm going to leave that while it's there, but certainly the nut there. Certainly it's not flush to the fingerboard here. It means there's a gap that's coming down at an angle at this end. And we need to address that and sort that out because that is not really not very clever. So we'll look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove and discard the strings. We're not going to be using them again. So we'll get those off and we'll get the neck set straight. I will do this off camera for now and I will come back and I'll alter the angle of the camera. In fact, I may be able to just get it there now to make things easier. And you have to pull up, we see my belly for a bit. But what I could do is I could just turn that camera there like so. And how's that? Is that any good? Is that any good to anyone? And then you can watch me work, can't you? So. There's certain things I can do with the camera at this angle. But this knot is really not pleasing me at all. It's really, really put on badly. 
Do I think he's a replacement? It could be. I don't think he's original looking as bad as that. But anyway, there's the strings loosened a little bit. How much looser can we go? I certainly would not be like would not like to be using these strings again, so uh, let's hope there's a spare set in the guitar bag it came in. They look like they're a coated string because they're black where it's been played. You never know. Oh these strings are horrible. Yuck. Anyway. See if there's any strings in the box. Hopefully there will be. Uh, is, uh, there you go. I can remember now. Set of Elixir 1047s in the box. That's what we will be going with. That is very good news. It means I can just snip these off and get them in the bin because they are pretty gnarly. Let's nip these off. Not worth saving any of these. There's no life in any of these. to get these straight out. Now if you know this trick, if you push the string in, you should be able to pull these pins straight out without having to get any nippers on them, like so. Push them down, pull out, push them down, pull out, there you go. And that's all of them out. And now, because we've snipped the ends, you see, we can just line them all up and get these rolled up, all in one like so. And we can uh, keep them all nice and tidy and get these in the bin. And that's it, you see, everything out of the way. And that is going to, we're not going to bing about everywhere then. Straight in the bin. Uh, same with these ends, just unravel these ends. And this one goes straight in the bin. You can just see the headstock there. That's good. This new camera angle helps me because I can actually work and you can see what I'm doing and I don't have to keep moving the camera every two minutes so let's get all this dust off here not nice to see is it the knot horrible let me show you what I mean with this knot and I'll bring it up to the camera and now you see I've got room to work without knocking the guitar but if you see big gap between the knot and the fingerboard there and the angle it's sat at is not pretty at all. There's quite a bit of glue on there, so I would say this is definitely a replacement nut. So what we're going to do is we're going to knock that nut off. And I'm going to assume there's no glue on this edge, but just in case there is, I'm going to take a blade or a knife, standing knife will be good. And what I'm going to do is very, very carefully, just going to score along this edge. And oh, there you go, right, the knife goes straight under, so I didn't need to do that. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to knock this off. We're going to take a fretting, fretting hammer, we're going to take the plastic side, and all I'm going to do is take my not straight edge, and we're just going to give this a couple of taps, and there you go, straight off, that's good. What we're going to do with this is we're going to file all this crap off, we're going to file this and make, I mean there's loads of glue in there, so this has been off more than once. And I'm going to look and shape the bottom of this knot if I can. I don't think I can because it's not high enough. Maybe I'll go with a replacement knot. I will talk to the owner, ask him if he wants me to replace this knot. I've got some, uh, I'll have some really good um, tusk knots in the drawer. Then again, what I could do is where this is as a gap, I could fill this in with rosewood dust and build that up so you don't have that gap anymore and then it's going to sit quite nice and the good thing about this knot is it's going to sit there with the bits of glue on there it's going to actually sit in the same place I could do that that may be an option it's a bone knot that's a good thing I think we'll stick with this knot and I will fill in the gap with some rosewood dust and some super glue and we'll go that route that's going to make things a lot easier so everything in the pot we always have a pot a parts pot, like so. When we work on a guitar, we put all the parts in a pot, and that's fantastic. So now let's have a look at the frets. If you're not level, it doesn't matter because we're leveling the whole lot anyway. But first, we're going to check the neck. Not straight edge. 
these notches go over the frets pretty self-explanatory really so we've got some back bow on there because we've now taken the strings off should well be an adjuster somewhere well let me tell you well where the heck is that this must come out otherwise i cannot get it to come out it better come out because if it doesn't i can't get at the adjuster for the truss rod Hmm, that's a pretty first time I've seen one of those. Uh, an O port apparently. Well, blow me sideways. I wouldn't sit down there. Maybe that's going to stop some kind of echo somewhere. It just makes my job more difficult, which is never pleasing. So let's have a look in there. Should be a four mil, is it? Yeah, we've got a four mil. Okay, we're gonna. Just run off and see which way that's going. That's going the right way. Right, we have a neck more or less. Just another turn on there, and we should have a neck absolutely straight. Two way truss rods, which is great. That's beautiful. We now have that neck. Hmm, not super straight. Sometimes you don't get them exactly straight. Well, a little bit of fall away on this end. That is not worrying me at all. Let me give it another. Eight to a quarter of a turn. Because that truss rod is now working the other way. Let me have a look. Okay, a little bit of relief in there. Don't really want that. So there's a bit of relief and a bit of fall away, which defies all logic, but it's how you get them. Sometimes you get a neck and you get straight as you can, but it sometimes goes up and down a bit in different areas. And it's done that with a bit of relief there and a bit of fall away there. So what we do is we set an average. And this comes with experience. And you basically stick it on there and you just go for the best average where you've got the neck as straight as possible. There's no fall away at this end, which is good tiny bit of fall away at this end, a tiny bit of relief in the middle. That is what I would call level. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move this onto the frets. So we're going to move it across just a notch so these where there are no gaps sits right on the frets and that should be the frets just about level. And that looks pretty good and that is going to be our level. So if we drop it down there, we need to make sure this is sitting on top of the frets and that looks pretty good and it feels pretty good. So where are we? So we have quite a bit of wear down this end. Not so much at this end. So we're gonna skim across all of the frets and I will bring the guitar over and just show where we have some wear here. Not super deep, uh, but I think if we just level all these off, we can't just level these and leave those at the other end because these will be lower than them and these frets at this end will be higher. It's no good, we need them all the same height. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna skim across a lot Something's just flown off the guitar. Yes. The saddle. The saddle's in really good condition. Don't need to file that anywhere. Uh, in the pot. So what we're going to do is we're going to level the frets, all of them, in one go using leveling beam. 240 grit that side, 400 grit that side. We'll go across the 240, following the radius, and this will remove the main material. And once we remove all the material we need to remove, we'll finish off with a 400 grit, which will smooth everything off. We don't need to remove a lot of material, but we are going to recrown everything. So what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to check for high frets. This is new to me, doing everything all in one go without stopping the video, stop starting coming back. But now we have the frets or the neck straight. It would have settled a little bit now. Let's see where we are. Very happy with that. That will do me. We're going to go across with the fret rocker four different lengths. Uh, this is precision cut. It's laser cut. It's um, and the mill perfectly flat. And the reason we have four lengths is we do three frets at a time. If we get a rock, we ascertain that one in the middle is high. And as we progress along the fingerboard, there was a high one there, lot because it's rocking. We turn over and go to a shorter length. 
so we can always do three frets at a time. And these frets are really quite level. High one there. Slightly higher there. Slightly higher there. And there. So we have a few higher ones. What I normally do is I do three areas. Center, outside as I look at it, inside as I look at it. So the problem is not high frets on this. But we do need to reprofile, especially the first six or seven frets at this end. High on that edge. High on that edge. High there. So let's see we turn over again so we can always do three frets. High there, that's three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven high frets anyway, we would have needed to do a fret level anyway. Seven, eight, same fret, eight, just in two places. Nine, so we have nine high frets anyway. 10. And this corner, 11. So we have 11 high frets anyway. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna mask the whole fingerboard, get it all taped up. And now I'm happy that the neck is level. We're gonna get some pen, marker pen on the top of the frets. Um, I'll show you how to work that, let's forget. For now, let me just go and get a black one. We just mark over the frets in black pen and what we do is we skim across here with the leveling beam with the sandpaper on and we'll remove all of the black pen. And once the black pen is removed from all of the frets as we're using a milled precision milled flat beam this is milled perfectly flat this edge and this edge it's a piece of 16 inch two by one inch box steel or box section steel milled perfectly flat on that edge and this edge so once we remove all the pen using this radio, uh, this sanding block we can ascertain that the frets are all level. Once they're level then we can get about recrowding them and getting them polished up. So this is going to give us a perfectly level plane surface for the foreseeable future. If these frets have lasted all these years and not been replaced I would say you've got many many years left of play in this guitar once these frets are leveled and recrowned. There's enough height on there for me to be very happy to recrown them. If we got down to something like 0.8 millimeters, they would be too low to recrown and we would be talking about doing a refret. But anyway, how we do this is, I'm not gonna use this, I'm, I'm gonna need some more new sandpaper on here, but I'm gonna just go with this just for now. And it's a matter of, I wouldn't normally do this without tape on there or without the sand all covered up, but just to show you on the camera, it's a matter of backwards and forwards, following the radius, the radius is this curve, like a road surface uh, across the neck and it's just it's following the radius of the neck and removing height from the frets till they are all level it's going pretty well have quite a bit of pen at the far side near the sand hole that's where we have more frets that are new leveling this one is not being touched it means this one's really quite high so that's the kind of thing we're looking for uh, quite a bit came from here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the guitar over again to the camera and I'm going to show where the pen has been removed if you look all down here the pen's removed, but when you get to this end, this pen not removed, and that's because we have high frets and we need to remove material from this area so we can get at these ones. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do it properly now. I'm going to get this all taped up. We're gonna tape all the areas between the frets. And we're gonna get this leveled properly. I'm gonna ascertain just one more time, now we've had the, we let the truss rod settle, 
Let's buy the neck as straight as it can be. Yep, very happy with that. There's a little bit of relief in there, so I'm going to slightly alter that. I'm just going to tighten up. We'll probably go that much. Just check again. I will let it settle before I begin. A little, just a little bit of relief in there. Just make sure we get in. There you go. Now we're in. We're going to go about. About one eighth of a turn there, was it? That should do. I'll let it settle five minutes before I come back. Okay, so make sure I'm going the right way. It can get confusing, even for someone like me. And that is a lot better. We are there. That's straight enough for me. Right, I'm going to get it all taped up, I'll come back and we'll take it from there. Okay, so I've just been talking to the owner of this guitar, and it was him that fitted the nut. Um, he's taken the wrap for that, so I've told him, I said, look, best thing to do is to replace it, because the nut is not going to be high enough if I reshape it. So he says, okay, replace the nut, absolutely fine. I recommended to him, what did I use? Tusk. Tusk is a man-made substance. Man-made ivory, basically, or man-made bone, made by Graftec. This fits the guitar, jumbo size. I have a couple in stock. I've just opened one just to try it and test it. And it will fit. It's just high enough, and it will fit better than the nut he had on there. So we're going to go with one of these. Uh, it will fit a lot better. It's almost flush. All I need to do is just carve into here, remove some of the old glue. Now, fortunately for the owner of this guitar, I have nut shelf files, these gubbins, and they're normally for strats, but you can also use them, oh there you go, the safe edge there, if you don't want to cut into anything, there it is, but what I can do with this is, I can remove all the crappy glue in the slot, and I can use the safe edge, once I've gone deep enough, I can use the safe side here, and just cut this edge, this ridge here, which is what I really need to do because there's a lot of glue on there and I'm probably better off holding this in the vise and doing this which I will do, I'm just showing you how we do it but this is going to remove the glue and I've not been cutting the base, just this edge here and that already is smooth and all I need to do now is back on this edge I will get this in the vise and do it properly But that should be good enough. And let's just try, we'll do a dry fit. Now I will be epoxying this in. That is a much, much better fit. Much, much better. Still not brilliant on this edge. We are still gonna have to fill slightly. But we do have some glue in there. I need to get rid of this glue in this area. If I can take it really, really steady and do it by hand. And that, we're just about there. And what I'm going to do is, I will epoxy this in. So we'll build up underneath. Quite a bit far from that. This was an almost perfect. In fact, I have fantastic files all over this workshop. But this is going to work better. And we're just removing that old glue. That already has created a much better shelf. We can fill in any gaps we have with a little bit of rosewood dust, which I will do. But that already is much better. Just need to get right into this corner. Someone's already had a go at this. That 
feels much, much better. I've got a big build up of glue there, I need to get this removed. Maybe I'll get a blade in there. Just have a look, see what we are. Now, that is a much, much better fit already. We are virtually there. So, I will finish this, I'll get this in the vise. And I will cut this properly. We'll get that nut fitted properly so it's really, really flush. Whoops, excuse me. I will come back and do that. We're going to get this tape top ready to level these frets. So everything's been okay by the owner. It's quite happy for me to change the nut. I was quite happy to reuse this nut. The bone one, but it does overlap. It's not, it's not very clever. If I have it up there, it's going to be too much of an angle. Then I'm going to to remove some material from the base which is not good at all so new knot best solution all round I will get some um, get some kind of solvent in there I'm going to melt this glue underneath here I'm going to get rid of it because that is in the way anyway back later so I'm just about to wrap up for the day but before I do I am just prepping the guitar neck ready for fret leveling and crowning and what I do is put strips of masking tape down the side of the neck both sides I've got three different widths of masking tape here and we're going to tape between the frets and that way when we level we don't get any in, any fineness or anything going in the wood but even better it's easier to clean and when we come to crowning and polishing we, we don't go into the wood when we're polishing we're, or, or we're cutting the frets with a file so this tape will stay on there until I've finished the polishing now. So what I'll do is, just on these last four here, I'll take a strip of masking tape that hopefully fits inside. If it doesn't, like this one doesn't, we'll take it inside that side and we'll take it outside on this one. And we've just got a little gap on each side there. So what I'll do is I'll take another piece, I'll rip it down the side. And I can take this piece here then, fill that slot. And we just want it just so it's just about touching the frets. So when we come to polishing, we're going to polish. Well, when we come to cutting the frets, we're going to cut the fret, not the fingerboard. This side again. The reason I put a strip underneath is when I come to peel it off, I'll peel it off and all this strip will come off this side and I can peel everything back, roll everything back together. Now when we come to the sides where your tape is going to be too wide or two of the frets where you touch them too wide. Rip it down the middle. We go over up to that side and then we just overlap here but up to the fret like so and there you go and we've got one more to do again la di da di da you'll see I've also taped up the body is Scotch 3M low tack tape this is because when I come to filing these across, when I come to recrowning, I could possibly dig in to the guitar with the file if I slip and I don't want to be marking the guitar. So we've got that on there. And when I'm filing these, if I do hit the guitar, I'm not going to put a dig in there, I'm going to scoot across the tape. I'm always very careful around this area. This is the hardest part for me to file. I always take the time. Good thing about it being acoustic is you do have a flatter radius, so it's much easier to file without actually having an accident. So that's all ready, it's all taped up. <clears throat> I'm ready now, I have a neck absolutely straight, or straight as it will be. Now ready to pen all these up, get a leveling beam, and level all of these frets. Uh, there's some quite deep grooves here we're gonna get rid of, so we're gonna take down probably not a great lot of height, tenth of a millimeter, uh, at the maximum a fifth of a millimeter. I would have thought we'd go down that far, it's quite a way. About a tenth of a millimetre off the top of these frets, get down to where these grooves are, then we'll get all these grooves out and disappeared. Uh, obviously we're going to flatten the frets, looking this way, because I'll be sanding across that way, and we're going to have to rebuild that crown. I'll show you how we do that when we get to that part. So, that's all ready for levelling, I'm going to put it back in its case. Uh, all its bits are out of its box and in the guitar case. And this will be something I'll probably do. I'll come back to this on Thursday. So uh, stay tuned. Back soon. So cracking on with the fret level. I've got the guitar where I want it. I've got an old tea towel underneath just to catch any filing so I don't get it into my um, setup mat. I don't want to be getting any causing any scratches on anyone else's guitar. 
I've not changed the paper on here. I'm going to go with this because it should always give me four or five levels. I've only had a couple. I'm going to go with it, see how it goes. If I do need to change it, I will change it. One thing I could do is you can always brush these. People won't think of doing that, but it doesn't work. You can always brush this and it will remove filings and it can give you a better cut. Now this is a 240 grit. I've bought tops of a fraction green pen. I alternate between the colour pens because I have four colours and I try, like, try, like them to run out at around about the same time. We never ever do, we never ever have done, but we try and get it to work that way. But anyway, we're just going to screw it across. And we do need to remove material from all of the frets. Just following the radius. I don't angle this and follow that part of the neck where it gets wider. I don't do that. I just follow the radius. So when I get to this part of the radius, I'll be overlapping here. Because we want to maintain that radius. Whatever that radius may be, we need to maintain that. See how it's going. And the guitar will want to move if you press too hard, so don't press hard. Let this do the work. You don't need to press down. Let the weight of the steel bar do the work. And the guitar won't move. Because otherwise, I normally I could stick this in the neck brace or the vice I made last year, like with the Stumac type with Vincent. Vincent um, uh, neck jig I built, but if you take your time and be careful, you don't have to put it in there. I don't know if I particularly need to, um, if I do the base for instance, oh, I've got a lot of work to do on the press. We shouldn't require too much work. I can already see at this end quite a few have flattened right out. green there so that's a little bit high but we have removed the wear in these frets I can zoom in just a little show you a bit more I'm not going to zoom right in that gives you more of an idea but these where these frets were worn we've now got rid of that and I'm gonna clean the fingerboard brush the beam I'm going to turn it around 180 degrees and I'm going to go again. If I want to, no, I'm not going to go again, I'm going to mark the frets again. You see how these are all nice and smooth. So I've removed the material from this end. Just need to get that level down the whole length of the neck, the whole length of the fingerboard. We certainly are getting there. Before I scoot across with the leveling beam, I've got to scoot across with the fret rocker. Just to see if we have any high ones anymore, or at least if we are level, we just need to level so we match that radius. So let me go and get that fret rocker. And if I have any high ones, I know I've still not far down enough, but I'd be thinking we're pretty close to where we need to be right now. So far, so good. The leveling takes no time at all. It's the crowning that takes a bit of time, but it's the polishing that takes the most time. It's a four or five hour job. I'd say a five hour job. There you go, this press high. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot across this one. I'm going to mark that either side so I know where it's high. I'm going to scoot across this one with a file. I'll mark where it's high. So it's taking a lot of hassle later on. I know we have some high frets around this end, but I gave this end quite a bit of, bit of attention. So I'd imagine we're very, very close to where we need to be with these frets. Very strange that it's just that one down there with a little bit of height when all of these are now fine. 
This one's a little bit high. We don't mind the second to last one being high because it wasn't going to affect anything. So this one is saying it's a little bit high. What I'm going to do is take a flat number four file, very smooth file. I've shown you this one many times before. Swiss, Swiss made, number four cut, super smooth, very, very sharp. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to check. I'll show you this one. A little bit of height, just there. Nowhere else, very strange. Let me try that again. Just there, tiny, tiny bit, clean the file. Check we've got the flat side. I can actually feel you know, that's a little bit high. It's a little bit of a dink in there. Cured that back and forth and front and back we're fine so let's get some more pen on there we're very close to being where we need to be so some pen where there isn't any I've just rubbed it off on my hand we are so close now just a few strokes should sort this I'm glad with that camera there because you're getting a more in-depth look at how this works Oh, that's a lot smoother. I can feel the smoothness, so there's hardly any resistance here, meaning the frets must be level. I don't know why, but I've always liked to turn. Turn it 180 degrees. That is feeling a lot better. I do believe that we have those frets all level now. Check this area and this area. We will still add high frets. It's still a tiny bit high. Very, very strange. I wonder if that's popping out. I wonder. Does happen. Strange things fret sometimes. Level, level, level. Okay, let's go over a different colour pen. We'll go with the red one. Okay, I'm gonna finish off. I'm just gonna go across with the 400 grit paper now because we've removed all these these grooves here, so we've got the frets as low as we need them to be. Now just matching that level down the whole length of the neck. And we're hoping to remove all of this pen in just a few strokes because that will tell me that all the frets are level. We can move on to the recrowning process. I cover the sand hole by the way. Any filings we get are not going to drop into the guitar. Right, here we go. 400 grit this time, just give that a quick brush. Straight away I can tell the presser level because all the pen has gone. See the guitar just moved there, it's because I'm pressing down too hard. And I felt a bit of resistance there. That is all of the red pen has gone. It means that the frets are level, which is really good news because that's what we set out to do. Again, fret rocker, check those areas that were high. Perfect. And just down here with a high fret. And that's fantastic. We are good. So that is the frets now level. is a great thing. We 
not remove too much off the high. How much? I don't know. I will eyeball it and have a look. Those frets are still a millimetre high just about, but at least 0.9 or 9 tenths of a millimetre, which is fantastic for an old guitar, because I bet they only started out about 1.2 millimetres high. But those frets are now level. Now that is not the end of the job by a long chalk. I hope you're liking this new camera angle because I'm letting the camera run. Rather than me keep stopping, starting, stopping, starting, I'm letting it run. So it's probably going to make the videos longer. And it, for some people, it may make the videos a little, more, a little bit more boring. But you get, get to see more of what I do and how I do it and how much longer it takes. You know, you don't just, it's not a 10 minute job, this. Anyway, I'm really happy that the frets are now level. And I'm now going to mark them up in black because what I'm going to do is we're going to recrown these and I'll explain what recrowning is in a second I'll explain what recrowning is now because I have just sanded the tops of these frets frets are this shape looking going along that way they're like a D shape all the way along it's called a crown and what I've done is I've flattened these frets going across with the levelling beam they are now flat across this way and I need to put that arc back in or the crown so we're going to build it up by carving each side of the fret until we start building up that crown. Very, very simple. I'll show you more in depth when I've got my files out. Probably have to move the camera again or at least zoom in on a different area. But anyway, a reason I go in black is I can then see what I'm doing when I'm recrowning these frets. And what I tend to do is put a nice thick black line across the top of the fret. And when I file these frets, and building up that crown, I like to leave a line down the centre. And that line down the centre will be the contact point between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. And we want it ideally round about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 of a millimetre. Uh, you could go a little bit less, I've been down to go to 0 0.3, it all depends how thin or thick the frets are. These are quite thin frets. I'll be quite happy 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Um, and I'm going to quickly, very quickly show you how I crown these, because I'm going to crown them off camera because it takes a while and I'm going to concentrate on an area that you can see probably better just to go. Moving swiftly on to the polishing stage, um, I normally go with four or five grits in this and today I'm going with six grits but I've got five grits of sandpaper there, uh, go from 800 to 1000, 1200, 1500 and 2000 grits and we go with a finer one each time and not only will it uh, bring these frets to a lovely glass light shine it will also remove any scratches that we have put in there with the uh, leveling beam um, before I've done that I would normally go with some 600 grit uh, which I've already done I'll show it with this, I'll show it with the 800 and I go across these edges here like so and we'll just round off these edges there because I've filed them and we might have a little bit of a burr on there so just smooth them all off I've already done that, I didn't use 600 grit I believe I used 180 grit. Now, the thing with that is, I ordered three sheets of 1800 grit there. Now, sure, this is 180, not 1800. It's really quite coarse. So, I'll just round it over those edges ever so slightly. And I'm going to carry on now with, I'm going to start with the 800 grit. I'm going to polish the frets. And we just take a little piece, wet the finger, wet the finger just so it holds the sandpaper. And we're just going to scoot across the top of the fret. And once we scoot it across the top, we're going to start getting into the corner. So I'm going behind, get into that corner, and get in front, closer to the camera, get into that corner, and again across the top. And we'll give it a real good polish. And that one's done, and we'll move on to the next one. And we're going to do this with five grits of paper. We're going to do it with one grit, we're going to do it with five more grits of paper. And then we're going to finish off with finest grade steel wool. It's going to take quite a while, so I'm going to do it all off camera. Take the time. Can be quite boring, but uh, you know, part of the part of the process, and it is so worth it. Once this job's done, I will love it. But there you go. There's two done. I've got four more bits of paper to do after this one, then steel wool. So I will come back and show you how we got on. And the frets are now all done. We've gone through five bits of paper. Uh, finished off with um, steel wool. And I'll zoom in just a little. You won't really get the effects, I don't think, from a single, but you might do. 
and finishing off with steel wall again over the top and into the corners far side from the camera near side to the camera then back over the top and trust me these press look fantastic just check my oh wow they're amazing I don't know what you can see from me, you might see a couple. They are beautiful. Scratchless, shiny, and level. All I need to do now is remove the tape, clean up the guitar, uh, put some oil on the fingerboard, put some oil on the bridge, and we'll put the guitar back together and get it tuned up. This is probably the best part of a fret level, or a refret, is when you remove the tape and see the results. And uh, I'm going to show you what I meant about having the tape underneath in a long strip because it helps when you remove and I'll show you how that works. And that's all come off nice and clean. The frets look beautiful. But this, having this strip underneath, you just peel it and it helps you grab the ends. You see, because I can just pull it up and there and then I can just rip all this off together. Makes it so, so much easier. And again, there will be a bit of clean up afterwards, removing the tape residue. But you know, that's not too difficult, is it? Look at this, beautiful. Be careful, there's always going to be a strip somewhere that's going to help me remove these bits. Look at this, I pull that up and it just brings all these free just by pulling that one strip there. Just makes the job so so much easier. Here, normally I'd save some of this, but you know what? Forget the next time. This strip can be saved and be used again. This can be used, for instance, I can tear pieces off and use it when I fit the new nut. So I'll just stick that on my bench out of the way over here. Now it's good if you can use something more than once. Well, I've been careful when you're peeling off. I've peeled stuff off before and it's a bit paint away. So this is supposed to be low tack tape. It's Scotch 3M tape. It is relatively low tack, but it doesn't mean it doesn't stick. It still sticks. Now these strips, for instance, I can use again because they've got nice straight edges. And like I say, I can always use when I'm masking off around a nut area. So I'll just stick these on the end of the bench. This can all go in the bin. How satisfying is that? And now we have all the wood nice and clean. Everything we've masked off, we're going to take some mineral oil, you know it's lemon oil. I'm just going to spray the fingerboard, probably a lot, more, a lot more there than I need, but I like to spread it on my hands. And just let that soak in, 10-15 minutes, and I'll come back and wipe one off and take any grime on there, we'll remove all that. Just let that soak in, treat the wood. These inlays are really quite rough, by the way. That's, that's really quite nasty. That's not very good at all. It's not flush to the rosewood. Very shoddy. I'm going to do the same over here. Now what I've got my hands, you see, I can rub over the bridge without getting any on the body. I can just take a finger and get right in there. treated the bridge also. So 
something you should do once or twice a year. Any excess oil I've got, I'll use it to clean the guitar top. I'm not going to harm anything, a little bit of oil. I'll be cleaning the guitar down anyway. Look at that. So I'll leave that 15 minutes. Come back, wipe this all off. Then we'll look at cutting a knot, getting the knot fitted and getting the guitar all set up. Okay guys, welcome back. Now, it's been a few days since I updated this guitar and um, re I've been so busy this weekend, I had so much to do, so much not guitar work to do. Um, but what I had to do is, I did have a problem with the nut and the nut shelf was a bit of a mess. Really was quite a mess after I took the other nut off and I thought, it's okay, I'll work around it. But the thing is, on closer inspection, this was all off camera, but on closer inspection, I looked at the nut shelf and I realised the one it was angled back sort of like that, and also one side of it, specifically this side, had a big build up of glue underneath where the nut was, and I had to I had to get rid of that, I had to chip it away, so I chipped it away, and uh, once I chipped it away, we're taking about another millimetre deep into the nut, nut slot, and it made, it made, it, it meant that this new nut going in was not high enough, it was only just coming up to the top of a fingerboard, so what I've had to do is, I went to improvise, and I've built up the area, the nut, the nut shelf itself, I got it all level, sounded it all flat, and I went and took some veneer. In fact, I took two layers of veneer and I built it up. And any areas, I, I actually left the veneer short of the sides of the guitar. Once I got the new knot glued on, there were two holes each side. And what I've done is I filled with rosewood dust and glued. And I'm gonna show you the job I've done. And I'm really, oh, I'm not quite pleased, I'm very pleased. There is a nut from this angle. And you'll see where the nut hits, it's the, um, the headstock. I've filled in with some epoxy glue there. But under that, there's two strips of veneer which was pine veneer, was it pine? Maple, maple veneer, and I've had, to, I've had to stain it, so I stained it first and glued it in. But anyway, that's that, and when you come along, I'm gonna show you the sides. And there you go, and this is, the, right under the knot there is where I have filled with wood dust and epoxy glue. And I've got it all smoothed off, and it looks beautiful. And if I hadn't told you, <coughs> excuse me, you wouldn't know, and here's the other side. And again, this area underneath the knot itself is epoxy glue with rosewood dust and it looks actually it looks really good you would not if i hadn't told you that you wouldn't know you just think that's how the guitar was built so we have a new graftech tusk knot on there plenty of height plenty of clearance above the frets and i'm going to get some strings on soon and we're going to recut those slots and reshape the top of the nut but that took me it's had a couple of extra hours on there i'm not going to charge for that because that wasn't part of the <coughs> part of what well it was part of what i was doing but I didn't envisage that problem. It wasn't really a problem. But the thing is, the reason I've not been touching this guitar is I've had so much to do. I've been so, so busy with church this weekend. I really stepped up at church. Uh, and this morning, for instance, I, my brother has moved to a new flat. And that in itself uh, is always going to cause problems. But you don't know my brother, so you're not going to know. So I'm not going to go into that. But I've helped him move this morning. Moved all his gear for him. And I've come back this afternoon just to get a little bit of this guitar done. Because it should be done by rights now. The lad should be fetching it this afternoon. And I had to bring him last night and say, look, it's not going to be done. I've got to go and sort my brother out in the morning, and uh, he needs help, and uh, he needs help moving. But blah blah blah. But anyway, here, here is the type of veneer I've used, and that's one strip, and it's quite thin. But I used a double thickness piece. It's two pieces glued together, and that gives you about one and a half millimeters extra. And basically, I just cut it with sandal. I've cut it inside the knot. Um, you'll see in there that it is not the exact width of the knot, and that's the width I used. And we built up the sides, the holes in the side. And we've built up with wood duster, well, rosewood and super glue. Oh, uh, not super glue, epoxy. We finished it off with super glue to give it a nice little shine. And it looks, it looks really, really good. I'm really, really, very pleased with that. So, all that remains for me to do now is to get some strings on, get the bridge back on, get some strings on, and we'll get it tuned up. And we'll, we'll, we'll sort out that nut itself, and we will, um, over there, uh, we'll get that nut carved. Another slight problem with this is this has a, I don't even know what you call it, I've got no idea. It's like a, I don't know what it is. This sits inside the sand hole. That thing, and that goes where the neck joins the body, and it sits inside. The thing is with this, it covers the truss rod, this does. So when I put strings on, that truss rod's got to be right first time, otherwise I've got to take the strings off, pull that out, alter the truss rod, do it again. I'm going to hope and pray that I get this right first time. I know with a tiny, tiny little bit of backbow in that truss rod, 
once I've got string tension that's pulling on there, it will pull it back and it should be okay. So I might just go right first time because this, it's not just a bind to fit, it's a bind to get out. This, all this bit under this rim here sits inside the guitar. What? I've got an idea what it does. It stops sound reverberating or whatever, but what? what is, you don't need that. You do not need that. But anyway, I'm going to crack on. Um, so that's it. I'll be back with an update again later. We'll get this guitar finished off and get it out the door. Okay, so final hurdle. So we're going to zoom in about there on the nut. We are going to cut the nut slots. Uh, this one's pinching, so we need to cut this one wider anyway on the G string there. But we are also going to lower the slots anyway because we're quite high above this first fret. And in hindsight, maybe I could have used one shim under there instead of two, but it looks really good, so I'm not too worried about that. Anyway, using my Uo Chikyu brand files, made in Japan, and we're going to find the closest to these string gauges. Now, the string gauges we're going with is a basically a 1047 set. Uh, elixirs, blah, 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 blah. Oh, we've got a lot, lot of light glare in here this morning. It is super sunny outside, it looks fantastic. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the gauges or get as close to the gauges as I possibly can with this file set. So I'm going to take, we am go 10, 14, 23. So I'm going to take a 10, 13, and 24, and we'll adjust accordingly. So the 10 and 13 will do for the 14. The 13 will go a little bit wider. Take a 24. And what else do we want? We need a 30, a 39, and a 47. Okay, so we've got a 32, a 36, and a 40, and a 46. So we're pretty close. But for instance, let's go and have a look. Right, okay, so the 36 needs to be a 39. I could use, you know, I don't want to take the back. I'm not even going to use that. I'm going to use a 42. I bought a 42 separate lot. And that's why I bought these files and got all different sizes. So we're going to use, <coughs> I could use a 17 for a 14. We're not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 13 for a 14 and we're going to slightly angle each side and just flare it open a little bit. 24 is fine for the 23. 32 for a 30, 42 for a 39 and 46 again will flare just slightly either side for the 47. So this is gonna be great. Um, I bought these in mind, so that's why I bought this set because we can flare slightly wider. So what we're gonna do is, go check the height of the strings above the first fret. And I'm gonna be looking at, on the lower E, about 0.4 millimeters, this is. We are metric in England. We don't do nths of an inch. So about 0.4, we're, Quite a bit high on that. I have a guitar, now the guitar is set up. The bridge is set, the neck is set, the truss rod is set where I want it. Then I come to do the, the gauges on the knot. So I'm gonna take a 46 and we're just gonna carve it. And I'm not worried about the mess that we're gonna make. We're gonna carve out just a little bit of the knot material. Slightly flaring. And I know I've already touched that yet, but we don't want to remove too much material. It's better to take too little. I'm slightly, we're, that is horizontal there, but I'm slightly just angling it back just a little bit. looking to be pretty close. Close and pre uh, tuning pretty close. Still a little high.
palette is just we could split hairs and go a tiny tiny bit more and what we're going to do is we're just going to we're not going to remove all the enemy material we're just going to slightly flare just slightly it's an angle keep it nice and smooth don't press and i am happy with where that is now these are old strings like I say, so we're going to, once I've got all the strings off uh, we shall carve the top of a knot again um, just to bring the top down to give it a nice shape but I'm really pleased Next one I'm going to go to about 0.35, we're quite high there and that string will be a 0 0.39 or 039. So we're going to go with a 42. I could go with a 36 and flare it, but I'm going to go with a 42. Don't need to flare that. Sometimes seems like you're not caught in trust me, you are. about 0.35 the rest I'm going to go with 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.275 0 0.25 just to bring it slightly down a little bit closer but you see where we're going with this so I'm going to finish this off off camera once it's done I may not even need to carve that knot I think that knot looks pretty good as it is I'm going to get these on four done once they're done we're going to take these strings off tidy up the top of the nut just a little bit, get a little bit of lube in there and we'll get the new set of strings on and the guitar will be ready to go. So I'm now happy where I am with this nut. We are down to 0 0.25 on the low. And 0 point, uh, sorry, 0 0.25 on the higher strings. I was doing that as I was 0.4 this side. You may consider that a little high on this side, but it's an acoustic. I want to leave it like that. The guitar plays fine. So just a quick twang. Sounds really, really good. Uh, very happy with that. So I'm going to remove these old strings. Uh, we're going to get the new set, I'm going to shape the knot just a little bit at the top. I'm going to get the new strings on there and the guitar will be good to go. And here we are, all done. And the guitar looks beautiful. I'll just, uh, oh, away. just finish stringing it with some Elixir Polyweb 1047s, coat of strings, feel very, very nice. Guitar looks fantastic. I'll just turn that volume down. There you go, so, came in for... Some fret work, it's had a complete fret level, recrown and polish, 
uh, other work I had to do some major work on the nut replacement where I had to basically rebuild the nut shelf using two pieces of veneer and I had to fill in the sides. I'm going to show you that. In fact, I'll show you that right now. Let's take it out of the amp. So here is the nut. And I basically made a shelf underneath. This dark piece underneath is uh, where I filled. I put two pieces of veneer underneath and I filled in with some rosewood dust and glue. Smoothed it all off, both sides, that side there and that side there. I think it looks very, very neat. Um, also under the nut shelf there, I built up underneath, right under the nut itself. So there's one millimetre of shelf there, easily. The nut now fits. There's no gap between the nut and the neck or the fingerboard. And that took quite some doing. I didn't charge for that, though I did charge for cutting the nut. The guitar looks fine. One other thing we managed to get rid of was this big O-ring thing that sat inside, that bit sat inside the guitar, absolutely horrible. And that bit came around, this bit fitted where the neck joins the body there. I don't know why. Thing is with that, with that in, you can't adjust the truss rod, so you can't set up the guitar. But anyway, let's get it plugged back in, because I also fixed the electrics, which I didn't charge for. And the sliders on these electrics were, volume and they were scratching all over. Bass, no scratching, we go to the middle. Treble, scoop, whatever that does. Sounds okay to me. Uh, unplugged also sounds pretty good. Uh, a better guitar than we sometimes given credit for these crafters. Let's try it unplugged. bad at all so I think we've recapped everything we've done with guitar it's really nice I've just given it a wipe down with some um, Dunlop 65 polish and cleaner there's the gubbins I think you'll agree it looks fantastic and it certainly looks better with that big o-ring thing out of there uh, the nut looks great I filed that down a little bit it's a really really nice shape everything I could do on this I have done cleaned all the electrics uh, give them a squirt of um, silver solid in there switch cleaner Policy the guitar, tightened up all the screws, uh, strap pins, what have you. Tuners have all been tightened up, tightened up here, tightened up here. The guitar looks fantastic. I'm sure the owner is going to be very pleased. So it is another project finished. Uh, just about to post the video. I'll get the video all done and get it posted onto my YouTube. Uh, that is me, uh, your fret friend, Vic. Um, all done, ready to move on to the next one. So go and check out my website, best place. It's facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash ng-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. As I say, my name is Vic. And until next time, boys and girls, as always, God bless you. Be good to each other. And I will see you soon.